these young Americans are sharing a great national experience. You will see them, hear them, and hear from them as they undergo this experience, as they meet the personal challenge presented to them. What they do, what they say, what they think, all this adds up to the story of Army basic training. You will come up here to the editor counter. You receive one each bottle of clothes. Come up here, and I will issue out one each raincoat to you. Move up there, and I will issue out one each. You're at the reception station. Your first clothing issue, a comfort issue, they call it. Enough to make you a soldier. Later, you'll get the full issue. Now, the length of one small building, thin walls, a few moments of time separate you from outside and the challenge awaiting you inside the army. You get those dog tags and put them on. And you get that good old army haircut. Tested carefully to find your special talents, your, for your own satisfaction in the service, career. and for your countries. You have directions. Part one, number reversal. <laughs> read the directions for part one, number reversal to yourself while I read them aloud. There you go. Well, you're here. You really arrived. You can loosen up a bit now. Food. Food and company. Two good cure-alls for any doubts or miseries and plenty of food and company. Take these studs I give you, put them inside the socks you're now wearing, take the uniform off, put it in your duffel bag, and step down the machine. Heels back, keep foot over. You're at the reception station just a short time, and you're feeling good as it goes along. Shoes. Boots. I want you to pick up two pair of combat boots and put them in your bag. Shirts for every occasion, summer and winter. You haven't done much except sign your name and make work for the IBM machines. But here you are with the works. 85 pounds of it. Next man. Please move up the line. Take your bag with you. None of this really prepares you for what happens next when you join your company for basic training. Nothing could because from now on, this is how it is. Come on, move on out there. Let's go. Take on. It racks your back, all right. Here's what one recruit said later when it was all over. And from the moment you got off, you were screamed at and yelled at and everything you can imagine. It really scared us. Stand at ease. I want all heads and eyes to turn towards me. Stand at. Now give me a close attention. I'm Sergeant Gossett, your first sergeant. This is your new home for the next eight weeks. Right now you're a civilian. When you leave here, you will be soldiers. Without further ado, I'm going to turn you over to your platoon sergeants. Spend the balance of the afternoon getting moved into the company. Headquarters company. First battle group. Headquarters company. First battle group. You are in the fourth platoon. Now, this is the best platoon in the company. Why is it? Because you're going to make it that way. The fourth platoon in headquarters company. Which is the best platoon in the company? like a bunch of girls. Now, I want you to sound off because in the fourth platoon, we don't have nothing but men. Which is the best platoon in the company? The okay. First squad leader, I want you to move the squad, pick up your duffel bag, line up, move it into the building with all your gear, and follow Sergeant Cadillo into the building. Okay, first squad, do a right face, move right around and pick up your bag. 
Right, you be the fleet man, Sergeant. You lead him right in there. Some of the guys were literally shaking. I mean, they made us run up the stairs with those big duffel bags, and we'd never even walk hardly with two of them. You ran. <laughs> Either that or God knows what might happen to you, you know, the way you think. Platoon sergeant for your next eight weeks of training. Now, during this eight weeks, you're going to find that this is a, going to be the roughest eight weeks that you've ever spent in your life. Now, during this eight weeks, you're going to find out how to survive as an individual soldier and how to work with other men in this platoon as a team. Now, in order to complete this basic, you've got to be physically fit. Get your foot off that footlock. And in order to be physically fit, we're going to start right out with the first week of giving you physical training, physical training by the end of eight weeks, you're going to be physically fit uh, to go into combat. You're going to be physically fit to survive in combat. And that is my job, to see that you are that way. Come in, I'm Sergeant Ellison. This is the 5th Platoon. Now, I know that ever since you came in this Army, everybody's been telling you what to do. Well, that's just the beginning, because you haven't heard nothing yet. It hasn't stopped here, and it never will. But I called you all together because I want to get an understanding. I want you to know me and what you can expect of me and what I will expect of all of you. You might find during this eight weeks that you're going to do a lot of things that is not pleasant to you. It is not meant to be pleasant to you. Combat is not going to be pleasant to you. And someday you men may have to face combat. And someday you're going to be in that situation where you're going to have to have this discipline. And when someone tells you to move, you've got to move or you're dead. Now, one thing I want you to get straight. I've only got one mission here. And it's not to become your dear friend. You left that when you left your home. My job is to make soldiers fighting men, a well-oiled fighting machine out of you civilians. Now, during this eight weeks off, boy, you're going to find that you're going to have personal problems. I want you to bring these personal problems to me if you cannot solve them yourself. As I told you, I'll be working with you in this eight weeks, sometimes 24 hours a day. Don't let these problems get uh, overbearing on yourself. Don't try to take care of them yourself by going over the hill. If you have a problem, come to me. And we'll talk this thing over and see if we can't stop it. If I can't help you, I can send you other places. They have the chaplain, the Red Cross. They have the company commander, the battle group commander, the brigade commander, all the way up the chain of command. Any time, any time that a non-commissioned officer or an officer walks into this bay, then at ease or attention will be called. And at that time, everybody will be off of this his bunk and on his feet. But don't think that just because you are here and we're working down on you, that we're beating down on you, that we're riding your back, that we're giving you orders, we're shouting at you, we're telling you what to do, what not to do. Don't feel that you still don't have some privileges as a soldier. Because as long as you act as a soldier, we'll treat you as a soldier. Anytime you shine those boots, if I can look in your boots and see my face, then you've got a good pair of boots. And your boots aren't good unless they look better than mine. That's how I expect your boots. And I expect your general area around here the same way. Your bunk, when I flip a dime on it, it better, ju it better jump right back in my hand. Because that's what I'm looking for. When I open that foot locker or wall locker, I don't want to see anything out of place. Nothing. Everything has its own compartment. Every place in your foot locker. that first day in the company. One old timer said, that day was the longest month I spent in the army. It begins, first week, classroom work, yes. But this being the army, it really starts with drill, naturally. Now, in working as a team, 
we're going to have this mounted drill. Now, this dismounted drill is designed to instill a sense of teamwork and a sense of discipline within you by following a command at that instant that it is given. It also is a uniform method of moving you from one place to another. Now, we can't just get you out in here in the street and say, okay, move out to building 4550. That wouldn't work. We've got to get the whole company there, and in order to do it, we've got to move in a military manner. And this is in the company formation. You're both in the same army, believe it or not. There are just a few weeks difference between you and them. somewhere you get that rifle. All right, now you just got these, these weapons. And this is the best friend that you'll ever have. <laughs> if you take care of it, it will take care of you. That means that you'll take better care of this weapon than you will anything else that you own. It's designed for one purpose, to kill. This is the business end right here. This is the butt. Don't get those two mixed up. You put this against your shoulder. This goes towards the enemy. This weapon, actually, you'll learn more about in other classes where we have detailed instruction. One thing I want you to keep in mind is this is your friend. Treat it that way, and it'll take care of you. What? Huh? It may be your friend, but for a while during that first week, it's like a sick friend. You lug it, tug it, throw it around. It weighs about eight pounds the first hour. Then it seems to put on weight. Sometimes it also has a sharp blade on the end. <laughs> 